All right, let's see if I can answer a, a real tough one here. Um, it's from uh, chapter 39, uh, number, what number is this? Uh, 65, and so it's a, it's a magenta one, pretty tough one, actually. Uh, maybe I ought to uh, grab my book here and read it. But it says, suppose that the sun is about to explode, and in an effort to escape, we depart on a spaceship traveling 0.8% uh, the speed of light and head towards uh, Tau Ceti, which is uh, 12 light years away. Uh, then at midpoint, we see it explode. Um, I won't keep reading. You guys can, can, can read it here. But, but a picture might look something uh, like this. Uh, here is our solar system. I'll just put our sun. And here is Tau Ceti over here. I'll just put a Tau. Uh, and then we then are on our way. And so we're moving in this, this spaceship to move to another solar system here and then we when we get here there's this flash of light which comes from the sun which says okay that it exploded um, but the unfortunate part of the story is then we also get a a flash of the exploding star at uh, or Tau Ceti exploding so if Tau Ceti explodes or they both explode. The question is, did they explode at the, at the same time? And, and maybe the easiest way to answer this is to answer actually B first. I, I see the, the uh, solution manual uh, did that. And so, so, so let, me, let me do that. And uh, let's just, for the sake of discussion, say that there was another observer just outside the, the spaceship. I, I noticed the solution manual calls it a, a hermit. Um, maybe E.T. might be a better de description. So we've got some alien out here. And it doesn't have to be a hermit. In other words, they don't have to live alone. It could be a whole society here. But, but, the, but the point is we should really ask this question, what does some stationary observer, so that'll be E.T., see and conclude. And then what does a uh, moving observer, that'd be you in the, in, the, in the spaceship. So let me just kind of forget about the uh, spaceship for a second. So again, here's our sun and here's Tal Ceti. And let's just take ET here in the, the middle. And E.T. gets this flash of light and flash of light. And, and they hit E.T. exactly at the, at the same time. <clears throat> now, that doesn't mean they exploded at exactly the same time by itself. And what you would have to do is say, okay, well, if I got this flash of light, let's trace it back to when did the sun explode. Now, we're told the whole distance here is 12 light years. Now, of course, that's the proper length. So that's in the stationary reference frame. And that's perfect for the uh, ET. And so we're really answering part B here because part B says, um, in a frame of reference in which the sun and Tau Ceti are at rest. So that's why I said, let's do B first. B, B might be easier because there really is none of this trickier or trying to understand relativity. <clears throat> it's just, you know, hey, watch an, watch an explosion. So from ET's perspective, the distance back to the sun is six light years. And for that matter, the distance to Tau Ceti is also uh, six light years. <clears throat> so if you, if you think about an observer here, getting this flash of lights, uh, they wouldn't say, hey, it, it happened right now. They would say, okay, I'm getting the light right now. And then they would do something, you know, like this. They would say, you know, distance equals to velocity times time. So again, nothing, nothing fancy here. They would just say, okay, well, the distance is six light years. And the speed of light is C. Um, and then we're looking for how much Time. How much time did it take for the for the light to get there? Now, a good way to write six light years is to say, let's write it as six years. 
uh, traveling at the speed of light. And then there's a C, T, and, uh, a C on both sides, and we get this time of six years. And so we would conclude, if we were this E.T. here, that this sun actually exploded six years ago. Uh, again, the important thing is to say it did not explode right when the light got to us. It took some time, and it took six years. And you would do the same thing for Tau Ceti. You would say, all right, distance is velocity times time. And again, we're looking at the same distance. And so that's the real, real key that we see the light at the same time. Add to that that the distances are the same and add to that that the velocities are the same. We end up saying they exploded at the same time. And so, so of course, we get this C and this T, and then the, you know, same thing over here. We've got six, well, I should write that maybe as six years, and then traveling at the speed of light, the two Cs cancel off, and then we would come to the same conclusion that um, the, the star Tau Ceti exploded six years before the light got to us. Um, and, and so as we ask this question then, when did the sun explode in relationship to Tau Ceti, uh, we would say they exploded at the same time. Uh, the, but that was six years ago. I'm not, again, the flashes of light got to me at the same time. But you can see that if Tau Ceti had been a little closer, even though the flashes of light may have got there at the same time, you wouldn't have concluded that they exploded at the same time. So again, just because the light gets there at the same time doesn't mean they exploded at the same time. It depended on their relative distance when they exploded. But again, at this point, from a, a person, E.T., who's at rest, you would say, well, yeah, I got the flashes of light at the same time, but also the distance to each of the exploding stars is the same, and the speed of light is the same. Therefore, the time it took to get there is the same, whether it be six years or not. The time is the same, and so they exploded at the same time. Um, and, and so there's the, the, the simple answer to, to B. Now, here's where it gets a, a little bit uh, harder. Um, let's take the spaceship's point of view. And so here's this uh, rocket ship. And from the rocket ship's perspective... The sun is moving away at point eight C. And Tau Ceti is moving towards the rocket ship at point eight C. And so that would be the perspective of the people in the uh, spaceship. Now, there's a couple ways we could go from here. Let me do a little different than the solution manual first, but then I'll, I'll do the solution manual. Uh, but I would just do your, your, your standard uh, transformations. Uh, that was the neat thing about this uh, whole, whole section. Let me just pull the, the textbook uh, into view here. Uh, but I'm on page, you know, 1,030 here. And if I put this in, this, this transformation here is a nice little equation um, that, you know, Einstein had gone through the, the, the work for us um, and uh, showed us that it's the same as what Lorenz did, which hopefully you caught that into the lecture, but let me not go into that now. But, but this is the calculation of you would get the, the, the time in some other frame. So, so let's call T uh, prime what, I, what I'm looking for, uh, the, the, the time as seen by the people in the, in the, in the ship. So, so let's fill in these other ones. And let me just move the textbook out of the way and write that equation here. So, so this is saying, uh, I'll put it kind of in the center here, T prime equals... And so here's my, my gamma factor, and then there is a T minus uh, V over C squared times X. 
Okay. And so we may, we may ask the, the, the following uh, question. Uh, the first one being, what would the time look like on a clock that was in this spaceship if you had started the clock when the sun exploded? Okay, so what we would do then is we would put in what these are, which these are as seen by the non-moving. So these are what is seen by this part B up here by, by ET. Uh, so let me call this T prime of the sun for a second. And I'll start here with the gamma. The gamma is 1 over the square root of 1.8 uh, squared uh, and C squared, which is over a C squared uh, square rooted. Okay, so maybe I'll, I'll just do that first. Uh, let me find my, my, my calculator here. Uh, but if I go 1 minus 0.8 uh, squared and then take the uh, square root of that and then take the reciprocal of that, this is the 1.666 repeating. Okay. And so now let's put in what the non-moving non observer, so the ET. So the ET is saying on their clock, the sun exploded six years ago. All right, so I'm gonna put six years. That's the time on the clock. When the clock again started, when the sun exploded, and then what does it say now, okay? But what we're trying to do is find out, okay, what would the clock say from the moving observer? When we start it, when the sun explodes, and then what would it, would it say? <clears throat> so then we have to put in the velocity of the sun. So the sun is uh, 0.8. Now, in my little picture here, it's moving in the negative direction. And it's at a position here, then, as again, seen by ET. So as we said, it would be six light years away. Um, it would be at a, the negative position, so let me put negative uh, six light years. Uh, let me write six light years as six uh, years times the speed of light, and then over C squared. Uh, that makes the, the math kind of nice, because the C here with the C there cancels with the two C's down there. And then the three negative signs leave a negative, so I've got six years minus, and an eight times a, a six is a 48, so this would be 4.8 years. And so grabbing my, my calculator here, six minus 4.8, and then multiplying 1.6666666 gives me two years ago. So I would conclude, if I'm in the spaceship, according to my clock, that the sun exploded two years ago. That's the mathematical transformation. And on the, the other side, over here, uh, Tal Seti, maybe I'll do a little uh, dividing line here, so if I can just kind of squeeze this in. But what would the time read in this moving clock? And Tal Seti. Again, going with the same idea that <clears throat> this clock that's in the spaceship, let's just say it, the clock started when Tal Seti exploded. And so what does it read now? And uh, so again, going with this same equation, here's the gamma. I can put the 1.6666 repeating. I could put the time as measured by ET. And so ET has six years. So again, from ET's perspective, Tal Seti, you know, we started that clock when Tal Seti exploded, and now six, it reads six years, and so that's why the, the T here, this is the unprimed, minus, and then we got to put in the, the speed of Tal Seti. Now again, Tal Seti is moving, in my picture, to the, to the left, so that's a negative 0.8C. Now the position of Tal Seti is a positive, and so that's where it's different here, positive 
uh, 6 years times a C all over C squared. And uh, let's scoot this over. I had a feeling it might be out of the window there. Okay. Uh, but this is the same calculation except for that negative sign. We have a, a positive sign. So this should be 1.66 repeating. And this should be 6 years. And the difference here is it should be plus... Uh, 4.8 years. And so grabbing my calculator, 6 plus 4.8, then multiplying by 1.6666666, uh, we get 18 years. And so the clock would be reading 18 years. And of course, then the difference between these is... 16 years. And so that's the answer to part A. Part A would say, um, how did it read? Um, part A, uh, yeah, in the spaceship's frame of reference, should we conclude that the two exploded at the same time? No, 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 that's absolutely not. Just because one person, E.T., said they exploded at the same time doesn't mean the other person did. That's the, the whole point of this whole chapter and the kind of the fun, weird stuff about special relativity. <clears throat> so we would, we would say then that Tau Ceti exploded eight, uh, 16 years before the sun. And Tau Ceti exploded 18 years ago. And the sun exploded two years ago. And it just took that much time for the light to get there. In fact, maybe to add some insight to this, even though I guess technically we're done here, uh, maybe I'll approach it a little bit more like your uh, author in the solution did. And uh, he does something like this. Uh, I think a picture would really help his, his solution. He's saying, okay, so here's a spaceship. And so you got to kind of have to imagine the spaceship being, being stationary. Okay. And let's just talk about the sun for a moment. <clears throat> the sun might have been right here when it exploded and then the light starts to go to the spaceship now again think of this as being stationary because it's you know from the the reference play, place of the of the spaceship so what that would mean is once the sun exploded the, that position where it exploded has kept moving along and so the light finally gets to us. And when the light finally gets to us, the sun's explosion point is, is over here. So in other words, this, this whole distance here is 3.6 light years. Now, I should be careful with that because what I quickly glanced over is to say that in the stationary observer, we have 12 light years between the sun and Tau Ceti. And if we take those 12 light years, which is the proper length, <clears throat> and say, how far does that look for somebody who is, is moving? We would take the 12 and divide it by this gamma factor and get 7.2 light years. And so remember, the sun is right in the middle. And so this distance back is where I got the, the 3.6 light years. So I kind of did that a little quick in my head, and I should point that out. But the, I think the author does a good job of that. He, he, he said, what is the, the, the distance between the two, uh, the sun and Tal Ceti, as <clears throat> seen by the moving observer or when they're moving? Okay, so again, back to this story here. So, so we're, 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 we're in this spaceship, and what we see is we see the sun moving away. And of course, it explodes, and, and we don't see right when it explodes. It's going to take some time for the light uh, to get here. And of course, from our earlier calculation, we, we've concluded that it would take two years. Let's see if we get the same thing. And so the, the sun explodes right here, and that explosion point, you know, keeps moving. And it moves with a speed of 0.8 C. So I would say that this distance right here would be 0.8 C multiplied by T, where T 
is the time it took to move from here to here, which, by the way, it's also the same time it took for the light then to go from here to our spaceship, which hopefully comes out to be two years, but I guess I would represent that this way. I would say this distance then would be the distance the light traveled. And we know light travels at the speed of light for that time, and each of that has to equal to 3.6 light years. So I have 0.8c multiplied by t added to a distance of 1.0t has to equal to 3.6 years multiplied by c. So again, let's think of 3.6 light years as 3.6 years traveling at the speed of light. That just makes the math a little bit easier. The c's can cancel off. And so what we get here is 1.8t equals to 3.6 years. And so when we do our division of 3.6 divided by 1.8, and the units are years, we come up with two years. Yay! So it did work. And so maybe that perspective kind of kind of helps here. And we, we get this flash of light. And again, just like any time we get the flash of light, we don't say that's when it happened. We say that's when we get the light. So in this case, it took two years to, for the light to, to get here. Now, of course, the, the distance from us to where the sun is now is more than two light years uh, because as the light was coming to us and so as the light traveled these two light years, it also then moved away at 1.6 the light years. And so the total is the 3.6 light years. That's the distance away. Uh, notice I never did say that the sun or anything was moving uh, relative to me, greater than the speed of light. This, this, this is the speed of the sun, and then this is the speed of the light. Now, granted, mathematically, I added them together, and you might even say, like your author, and I don't think th this is a good way to put it, but this is where he puts it. He says the gap is opening up at a rate of 1.8 uh, times the speed of light, which, which is true, but that, that could get misinterpreted as a uh, Something is going faster than the speed of light, and it's not. It's a one distance and another distance, and the two distances add up. And, and we can do the same thing here with Tau Ceti. So Tau Ceti would look something like this. Um, maybe I'll give myself a little more, more room here, because Tau Ceti is going to then explode somewhere here. And the light is going to be traveling to the spaceship. So again, we will get this flash of light. <clears throat> now, in no way are we saying that the flash of light, which gets here at the same moment as the flash of light for the sun, indicates that this exploded at the same moment as the sun, because we don't know how far back it is. In fact, you can kind of see in this drawing, that's why I thought the, the drawing might be, might be helpful here, that it explodes and the light's traveling outward. And, of course, as the light is traveling outward at a speed of the speed of light, <clears throat> the position of Tau Ceti would be maybe right here by the time this light got all the way to my spaceship. Okay, and, and so I would say, you know, something to this effect that, okay, this then is the position of where Tau Ceti is uh, when the light finally gets to me. And then this is the 3.6 light years. And, of course, it was closing in this, this, this gap here. Uh, at a rate of this 0.8 C. Okay. And, and, of course, the light traveled from this explosion all the way to me. And, and so if I do the same kind of thinking here that I, that I did here, I would say, all right, for the light to get all the way from where it exploded to me, it would be traveling at the speed of light for some period of time. And that's the period of time I would like to know. How long ago did it explode? Okay, and so that's this, this whole uh, distance here. 
And that distance would be made out of a 0.8 C times this time. So again, that's the same time. And, you know, the time it took for the light to go from the explosion all the way to my spaceship is the same time right here as it took for this position of Tau Ceti to move to here. And so that's why it's the same T here. And of course, a different speed. And then, of course, if we add this other 3.6 light years, and let me write it as a year times a C, then this would be that distance here. So these two distances right here add up to the total distance, the, the light travel. And if we put the light terms together and move this over to here, we get 0.2 CT and 3.6 years times C, the C's cancel off, and we solve for time, we get 3.6 years divided by 0.2, which is 18 years ago. Yay! And so again, it, it, it does match in the sense that the time difference is 16 years, and so Tau Ceti blew up 16 years before the sun. And again, make it clear, Tau Ceti blew up 18 years ago, the sun blew up two years ago. The flash of light gets to us at the same time. And now in this picture, I think you, you see it a, a, a little bit better of why I would say that, um, you know, Tau Ceti is going to have to blow up first. Even though the light has to get to us, even though the light gets to us at the same moment in time, because of the motion to the left, this light here has got to go a longer way than the light here. And since the light travels at the same speed and gets here at the same moment, the light must have originated much further away at Tau Ceti than, 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 the, than the sun and therefore exploded a long time earlier from the perspective of somebody in the, in the, in the spaceship. Hope that helps.